For those of you just coming on the call, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the call. Today, we do have a special guest, Carl Nicholas, who's been with us. Oh, I believe he's actually in his fifth month right now. So he's he's relatively new and new to the industry. We're seeing some really interesting numbers from Carl. Let me just jump right in. Since since you've been working with us now, four months in a row, you've managed to break, I believe you've the minimum you've written is like 25K. So you're consistently writing 25 to 30K. Um, the last two months, let's see, June, you did 39K. And last month, July, you did over 35K. So congratulations on that. That's pretty huge especially for someone new on a platform like that, that, that never, never really sold final expense. You, you mind hopping in and tell us how, how long have you been selling final expense and maybe even give us a little bit of information on what it actually felt like, like as soon as you started, you know, getting through those, those first couple of weeks. Well, first of all, as far as final expense, I've never sold final expense. I mean, I'm not brand new to the insurance industry. I worked for a couple of years back in the 1980s uh, with New York Life Insurance. I worked with Combined Insurance for a couple of years back in the late 1990s. Uh, but that was all face-to-face -face presentations. It was a variety of products. It was, it was not uh, brokering a number of different uh, insurance companies. I was working with specifically one insurance company in each of those cases. But I've never sold over the phone. I've never I never specifically keyed in on final expense working with the kind of market that we're working. So this was uh, this has been completely new to me um, in a lot of different respects. Excellent. Okay. And thank you for that. So yeah, I, I guess what I was wanted to kind of jump in with was maybe let's just start with what was those what was that first week or two like on the platform? Nervous. I was nervous, obviously, um, because like I said, I'd never sold anything over the phone before. Um, but one of the things that I did buy into, um, because from my training back when I uh, worked for both New York Life Insurance and with Combined Insurance, one of the things they had that was similar to what we do is they had a set presentation that um, that was used and they emphasized to me the importance of following the, learning the presentation well and following the presentation well so and that's what what we do too so I bought into that so my first couple of weeks my my goal my my main thrust was learning the presentation and getting it down and being very very comfortable with it that was that was my main objective um, because I knew that once I got the presentation down, everything else would sort of fall in place after that. So I followed the system. I, I did exactly what was taught as far as making the phone calls, calling, you know, making sure you call ring each number at least three times. Um, and it, I think the hardest thing for me was just getting used to the various applications of the different carriers and trying to get a feel for who was going to be approved by what carrier and what carriers to emphasize and things like that. That was, that was the biggest struggle I had the first couple of weeks. So, so what was it like, you know, once you, you closed your first sale or first couple of sales, what was it like going through that application process, you know, with a client for the first time? Um, like I said, it was a little, it was a little nervous. I was, um, I was a little hesitant uh, because, again, I, it, it was new to me. But once I realized how easy it was, um, once I realized that is, if, if I was confident in doing it, even if I was, even if technology wasn't working for me, which happens sometimes, um, if I was confident with the client, they were going to be okay with everything. Even to the point that last week there were a couple. Well, the last couple of weeks with. With the SBLI situation, there were a couple. I had to switch gears like crazy the last couple of weeks, um, going to different carriers. But I've learned that, and I learned this the first couple of weeks. Is again, I, I'm the professional. I'm leading the client. So even if something's going wrong, if I handle it correctly, um, and just and just switch gears to a different to a different application or a different a different company, that everything will go fine. Um, 
I have rarely had one of the nice things I, is that um, because of that, that um, confidence, I guess is the best way to put it, believing in myself and believing in what I'm selling because of that. Um, I've rarely had anybody that when I had to switch gears to a different company, because the one didn't approve, I've rarely had anybody shut the door on me completely and just say, nah, I, don't, I forget it. I don't want it. I've, always, I've, I've been very consistent in being able to switch gears, which, um, that's which I huge. think is, is, is important. Yeah, it's, that's huge. It's, it's, all, it's all down to just keeping your cool, keeping your confidence, knowing that you know, you've already built up some rapport with these folks. So when there's a bump in the road, that's all it is. It, it's no big deal. We're able to switch gears pretty simple. Um, excellent. Good stuff. Good stuff. So and I, one thing, one thing yes. is I'm looking at the, your wall behind you and what you have there is, is perfect. Mindset is everything. I mean, that's right. When I, when I, and I believe, I've always believed this. One of my mantras that I've lived by for most of my, most of my adult life is your attitude is your choice. So choose to have a fantastic day. I tell people that's on my voicemail. I, that's why I tell everybody, and it's true. If my attitude is right going in every day, if my mindset is right, I can handle the objections. I can handle anything that comes my way. So it's all about having the right mindset. Excellent. So let's 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 talk a little bit about your 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 day and what your what your day looks like, your work day, and maybe your work week looks off. And I look, I we know that Mondays are always the slowest um during with our system you know it takes a couple of days for the system to really kick in to get a lot of appointments so are you doing anything different on monday than you're doing from the rest of the week my days are pretty consistent i i mondays uh, the only thing probably that i do any different on mondays is monday is the day that i key in on if there's anybody um who i can't close who you know, is just adamant about it. have to think about it, have to think, give me a couple of days. Those people, I, I focus in on calling back. You know, if, if I had anybody like that the previous week that I call them back on Mondays, that's, um, and it's, and sometimes, you know, I would say maybe at best, maybe two out of 10 people that I'm calling back um, on Monday end up being a sale, but that's still <laughs> two out of 10. I mean, I, if, if I've had some big Mondays because I have followed through with those people. So even nice. though, even though the likelihood, you know, I, I, I do continue to live by the uh, believe that, you know, for most, most of the time, um, at least 80 to 90% of the time, you got to close on the first call. Um, that's your opportunity. And I, and I, and I make sure that I focus on that, but there are times when, you just can't get past that. I need to think about it. I won't think, you know, I won't do anything today. And so though I don't give up on those people. I do follow up on them. But Monday is the day I do that because Monday I don't have as many appointments. So I utilize the callbacks on Monday. Mondays I also, if I have any um, service related stuff that I have to do, like I've had a couple calls last week, a um, couple text messages from, from uh, policyholders that said, oh, I need to change my, um, I need to, I, I need to change my banking information. So oh, those ones, I always get back to, I said, let me, let me call you on Monday. We'll take care of that. So any service related stuff, I typically, unless it's urgent, I typically wait until Monday to do that. Um, and all, oftentimes, again, that's another opportunity for a follow-up sale. So I, I, I take advantage, advantage of that, especially if I'm dealing with a grandparent that I've sold a policy to, and I know they have grandchildren because they talk to me incessantly about their grandchildren. I'll oftentimes when I'm following up on that call with, you know, to change the back, he was like, do you ever think of doing insurance for your grandchildren? And sometimes they, they're like, oh yeah, that would be a great gift. And I've been able to sell some, some grandchildren poly, full life policies um, nice. through Omaha uh, in that way. So typically Monday's my follow up day. That's, that's what, that's what I, that's what I key in on. Of course, I, I, I always make sure that I'm trying to sell the, the appointments that I have. Um, and sometimes I've had, I've had good, um, Monday's never been my biggest day, but I've had some three, $4,000 Mondays. So it's, it's not like, um, you know, Monday is, is, is a day that's, um, it's just a, you know, to give up on. I mean, exactly. Well, and you know, the other thing, if you're doing what we teach, 
you know, I, I think most agents Monday should probably be pretty much your busiest day, really. You know, if you're, you're chasing the old leads, you're chasing the appointments, the stood ups, uh, you're chasing the people, like you said, that, that you focus in on that uh, had to think about it, you know, that you, you couldn't close, you know, they had to speak with someone, they had to do something else. So yeah, and then you add that to all the business, we got to take care of our business, we got to make sure that the clients that were approved last week actually were approved last week. Um, and and I always I always recommend if you haven't by this point sent out a thank you card to, to, to the people you sold last week, you should definitely maybe do that on Monday. Keep busy on Monday, guys. That that's that's pretty much the point. Absolutely. So, all right. So let's talk a little bit about your budget and your weekly goal. So what is your average weekly budget and what's your goal? You know, what what do you what's your uh, sales goals for for the week? Hey, well, um, when I started out um, back in late March, my first couple of weeks, my budget was eight hundred dollars. I, I, in April, I moved it up to one thousand, and then I added a hundred dollars um, every every couple of weeks until I think when we hit um, the end of May was the first time <clears throat> I ended up with fifteen hundred, and that's what that's what ever since then. That has been my consistent budget for advertising has been fifteen hundred dollars. I do that every week, even on weeks that I don't like I like a three day weekend week or, or I know that I need I need a Friday off. Even if it's only a four day work week, I still do the fifteen hundred dollar budget um, those weeks because, you know, I'm cramming more appointments in the four days as opposed to the five days. And, and still those weeks end up being good weeks. Maybe they're not my best weeks, but even a four day work week with a fifteen hundred dollar budget. Oftentimes is a six, seven, sometimes eight thousand dollar week. So, um, very, I believe in being very consistent with my budget. My budget also encompasses, um, like we talked. I think I talked about on a, a, a call a week or two ago, is um, I, I budget in gift cards um, that I send with. I uh, send a five dollar gift card from Dunkin' Donuts to every every sale that I make. Um, I also use a Dairy Queen five dollar Dairy Queen gift card that I send out with my um, birthday cards so that's part of you know there's there's probably about a 150 to 200 dollar budget for those gift cards it's part of my part of my weekly weekly budget so and with nice. that with that i average anywhere i mean on on a low day like today um I, i'm going into the day with 17 appointments that'll be my low day uh, typically i have anywhere from 20 to 30 sometimes as much as 35 appointments on any given day. Um, sometimes, <laughs> um, sometimes I, I am uh, triple and quadruple booked on a half an hour. Those can be challenging, challenging days, but it, they're good days. I mean, it's a good problem to have. And I, and that's, that's one thing um, that, that scared me at first um, with having a big budget was how am I going to deal with if I get two hours behind, which happens sometimes. And, you know, you get some people that are get a little frustrated with you um, when that happens. But again, it's one of those mindset things. If you handle it right, you know, just say, hey, I mean, being two hours behind because you're selling is a good problem to have. It is a really, really good problem. So just have a good mindset with it, roll with it. I usually, when I talk to someone, if I'm like calling an hour and a half, two hours by, I, I joke and say, you know, I've been so busy uh, helping other people and I just got behind. But, you know, and I say it's a good problem to have, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I, I messed up your schedule. And nine chances out of 10, they come back, they're like, OK, with it. Sometimes they need to reschedule sometimes, but most of the time they're able to able to still able to talk at that moment. So, again, it's a mindset thing. But, yeah, uh, I typically start the day. On Mondays, I typically, my first appointments are at 9.30 after the, that's Mondays and Thursdays are typical. I don't have my first appointment scheduled until 9.30 because of the, because of the call, because of our call, the training. Um, but, um, and then I usually run appointments on, uh, on uh, Mondays and Thursdays until 6 p.m., sometimes till 7 p.m. Uh, then on, um, on the other days of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, my day starts at eight o'clock. That's when I that's when I have the schedule opened up, and I go I again go till six o'clock typically. I try to I try to have at least forty five to fifty hours available to sell uh, for for people to people to schedule their appointments during the week. Um, so typically, um, I'm you know once I start on that phone, 
um, on any given day, I, I'm on the phone. I accept taking a break to go to the bathroom or getting a getting a snack, a snack or something. Typically, I'm on the phone for eight 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 to ten hours um, straight all day long. So. Excellent. All right. So, sales wise, what's your daily goal? What's your weekly goal? My daily goal is three sales, to, three to four sales, um, 1500 to 2000 dollars annual premium a day. Um, and you know, because my weekly goal is ten thousand. That's just that's the standard. Um, is always to hit ten thousand. Now I, I don't hit ten thousand every week, but you know, usually my 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 numbers show I usually hit ten thousand two um two weeks out of the month, um typically. So and again I, I it's it's about consistency, it's about you know um calling all of the appointments, um following the system. Um Excellent. On it. Excellent. Working hard every day. All right. So um, let's talk a little bit about your presentation. I'm curious, uh, do you do anything different when the client answers the phone or when you, you know, when you when you call a lead or an appointment? Are you doing anything different um off presentation or are you doing like basically exactly what's what's on the presentation? How do how do you start the call off? I follow the presentation pretty much to the letter. I'm, I'm, I'm a believer in the presentation. I, I really, I love the book, um, the, the way of the wolf. I mean, it's, um, that uh, his way of selling, um, the straight line selling is amazing and I believe in it and I follow it. And so I follow this, I follow the script to the letter. I, I don't, I, I rarely deter from it. Um, and, uh, it's just it's gold. I believe it's 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 the key. Um, it's one of the keys to, to everything is is the presentation. So I learned it. I follow it. Um, you know, if I'm if I'm having a rough day, I, sometimes I'll take a break and go back and listen to one of my presentations or even just go through the presentation myself and think, what am I doing something different? Am I is my enthusiasm lacking? Am I not enunciating in the right places? I, you know, I'm constantly evaluating my presentation because it's 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 the key to everything um with the set the sale if my presentation is on um i get so many lay downs it's unbelievable i mean that's and i and i attribute it again beautiful going a good presentation um and part of the presentation too is is the building report and for me the building report takes place the key place where i build rapport is right when i'm asking all the qualifying questions that's when there's opportunities for dialogue to go back and forth with you and the client. And I take advantage of that. And that's when I oftentimes find out even before the part of the presentation where you're asked, is there anything that, you know, uh, anything that has you looking for life insurance? Oftentimes I don't even have to use that. I can skip by that because I find out that information in the midst of um, the qualifying questions. Um, sometimes it just, it's, it's something that the client says that prompts me to, to you know, to probe a little bit more, and then I find out that they had a situation with a with a grandparent or a parent or a brother sister who passed away unexpectedly, and they um, they didn't have any anything planned ahead. They so the family had to you know scramble to to come up with the funds. So I oftentimes find all of that out. The, the building rapport takes place in the midst of asking those questions and qualifying. Huge. Again, I don't, I don't deter from that presentation because it is, it is money. It's Excellent. gold. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So with the presentation, um, we get these looky loos, right? We get the tire yeah. kickers. We hear stuff like that. Is there anything that you're doing to kind of weed them out or are you just go same presentation and let's just deal with that when they give you the, well, I got to think about it. For the first for the for the first three months, I I didn't play around with that. I just continued all the way to the close. It's not until recently that I've gotten a better, and I feel like that's that I wasn't experienced enough the first couple few months to be able to accurately determine that. Um, now I've got a better feel for things. I'm I'm I'm, I'm more comfortable completely with the whole process. But yeah, I can I can usually tell usually the two questions. Um, in the presentation that that sort of we that, that'll have that happen is right up front um, when you say 
Um, I, I see, oh, how's that go? Uh, I have the presentation memorized, but, um, <laughs> but I, I always read it um, right. as a guide. Um, but when you ask right up front, I, I, I see you sent in for the state approved life and burial coverage. Well, that's usually, you, know, you find out real quick there. No, I, that's, not what I, that's not what I was looking for. And then, then I'll say to them usually, well, you know, there was, a, there was an ad on Facebook that you responded to. You filled out the qualification questions. You set an appointment. Don't you remember? Do you remember that? If they say no, I'm like, well, I'm sorry. Have a nice day. Usually, if, like, if I can't get past that, I usually, you know, I, I, that's when I, I weed that one out. It doesn't happen very often. Normally, when I prompt them that, you know, you fill out this form. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I did do that. Yeah, I guess I did want that. And sometimes that just leads me right back into the presentation. But oftentimes that that'll be a moment when um, when when you weed out somebody. Another one is is right at the end of the first page when you when you say um, something to the effect that you know uh, we're going to go through these qualifying questions um, to see if you qualify. Um, but I want to be able you know so you know the exact cost right now over the phone. That's usually oftentimes a moment because then they're like, wait, wait a minute, I thought this was free, you know. And then I used to go through the through that well you know nothing nothing in life is is free um these are state regulated programs we're trying to be able to provide for people that have not planned ahead for their final expenses and in the past you know um as with the insurance industry after 50 years old it was almost impossible to get qualified for life insurance these state qualified plans allow you to be qualified at discount rates um and then if, you know, oftentimes that, again, let's, leads me right back into the presentation. Sometimes they'll say, no, thank you. I thought I, 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 I don't want that. Yeah, you will hang up at that point. But um, I give, you know, I always give, I always answer the objections at least once or twice at that for, uh, on that first page um, before I give up. But there, you know, there comes a time where you get, I would recommend for somebody new to, to try plow through that, plow up to the close. You do what you know, overcome the objection and work on getting to the close until you know that. Until instinctively you've done this enough times that you know that you can feel it. Um, but it takes a while. It takes a while to get there. Solid. I, I love that. So okay, so let's say you get to the close, right? And you go for it. You, uh, and they're giving you the, well, okay, but uh, can I call you back? Uh, I got to think about it. I got to talk to the kids first. What, what are you doing once they start that? If oh, my, I, I, have, I am the, I've always been a big believer in the assumptive close. So when I get to the close, I am going to go to the app. I'm going to do everything I can to get to the application, no matter what. So um, if they, they start him hawing with me and getting hesitant and wanting to think about it, so I usually agree with him. I'm like, oh, you know what? I completely agree. I know it's, this is an important decision. You have to think about it. But the most important thing right now is to, to know that you qualified for the insurance, to know that you can get approved. So what, all, all we're talking about is going to the application and getting you approved with SVLI or Guaranteed Trust Life or whichever, whichever one I know that, you know, that, that, I've, told, that I've keyed in on. And then I get, I do everything I can to get into that application. If I can get into the application, 99% of the time, it's a sale, you know, um, Excellent. for me. Yeah. The key for me is doing everything I can to get to the application. Sometimes it's just, it is, it's just agreeing with them saying, hey, you know, we all want to think about this is an important decision, but you want to think about it with 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 the policy in front of you. Like we get you approved, we will get the policy mailed out to you. Then you have you can make an informed decision. And you know, normally once they get the policy in hand, you know the um, you know the, everybody. We all have lapses. We all have once they cancel. But you know, again, 80, 90 percent of the time, once they have that policy in hand, they they're like, oh, I qualified for it. Great. So excellent. All right. So. I'm curious, which clothes do you use? The one where you're giving one price or the one where you're telling them to go ahead and write down three prices? I, I like the one price clothes. I, from the minute I saw it, that's the one that, that just resonated with me. So I, you know, I always, you know, my, my rule of thumb is I, I recommend policies in the neighborhood of $10,000. So that's where I always start. I give them the price for $10,000. 
Um, some, and again, sometimes, you know, I, I come to that close, say, and then I ask, I ask her, well, you know, price for you is $40 a month. Um, does that make sense? Or would you like to look at something a little higher or a little lower? Putting that, you know, emphasizing the higher and lower. And then I, then like I, th I said, a, I think a week ago in the call, then I stay silent. I wait. It sometimes it seems like a, like an eternity waiting 10, 15, 20 seconds for them to respond. But I don't say a word until the next word comes out of their mouth. Uh, because once I, once they give me an indication, then I know where to go. Um, not, you know, nine out of 10 times so they'll say, yep, that makes sense. Um, it's amazing to me how many times people will say, well, tell me what it would cost for $20,000. <laughs> they do that. I'm like, no, they do that. I know I've got it. I'm like, you know, whether it's at the 10 or the 20, I know I've got it at that point. Excellent. But, All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> pretty solid, pretty solid. So, um, for prepping them, just in case, you know, we one of the things we always teach guys is that just in case they get the client gets declined, you know, because they forgot to mention, you know, about some medication they're they're taking or some illness that they had. Um, how do you prep them just in case you have to switch gears, or do you? I use I use I do prep them, but it usually isn't until um, the MI like for SBLI um, or a lot of the companies like. Um, that run the MI, the MB, MIB, yep, MIB report, whatever. Yeah, I, I knew what it was though. The prescription history <laughs> report. What those reports? When I get to that, when I get to that part where they're going to run the report, that's when I sort of prep and I say, "Well, I said we're going to run the MIB report now. Check your medical history, your prescriptions. We're going to cross our fingers that everything goes through just like I told you. And you're going to get the rate we talked about." I said, and I tell them, I said, nine chances out of 10, it happens. But every once in a while, you just never know. Sometimes these companies, they get a little hesitant on certain med medications. So, but don't worry. We have a backup plan if that happens. Um, so, I've, and that's you. And I, you know, I emphasize, we have nine chances out of 10. We're going to get it approved, cross our fingers. But don't worry. We have a backup plan if it doesn't. Yeah. So, Excellent. That's, that's the prep. <laughs> Excellent. So you're prepping them the whole, the whole, all the way through. That's and that's the way to do it, guys. So I'm a new agent. What advice would you give to me, uh, knowing that I'm going to be starting today or tomorrow? And what what advice would you give to this agent when it comes time to explain the signature, you know, process and uh, to the client? and to do that first electronic application? My advice always is be as prepared as possible. But remember, part of the preparation is actually, you, just, you can only prepare so much. I mean, there's, there's nothing that prepares you for real life. So just understand that the first couple of weeks, the first applications, there are going to be a learning experience. You're in a learning curve. And I, that would be my, my big advice to everyone is just dive right in. Don't, don't try to wait until you've got it all down before you do that first presentation or before you get into that first step. Be as prepared as you can be ahead of time, but don't let your preparation stand in the way. Don't feel like you have to be like, you know, the perfect presenter or the perfect on the applications. Now, what I did was I did go in, um, as my preparation, when I was, I reviewed the presentation, I followed your advice as far as picking a few companies that I wanted to key in on the first couple, the first, um, first month or so, I didn't do anything past SBLI, uh, American Amicable, uh, GTL, and I, I think Great Western. I think those were the four companies that I key, oh, Liberty Bankers Life too. Those were the four or five companies I keyed in on. I made sure I went through their applications ahead of time. My, I did my own, went through it uh, with either using my wife's information or my information just to get comfortable with the application. application. But um, then, you know, um, again, you know, you're doing your own stuff, so it's a little easier, but um, I would say don't don't hesitate when when just dive right in there and, and understand that first month or so is gonna you're gonna be in a in a learning curve. So you're gonna miss sales that normal that you would that you know that, and that's okay. Um, it's frustrating, but that's part of the process. I mean you learn through failure. Um, that's one of the one of the best ways to learn is when, when you fail, when you mess up, then you have to go back and think, okay, what could I have done differently? 
and then you learn from it. And so okay. the next time that happens, you're ready for it. But that that only happens if you dive right in. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm a new agent, and I'm just getting ready to start. What advice would you give to me when it comes time to, or maybe even prepping to overcome the objections? Um, again, I think it's learning. I mean, it's uh, becoming familiar with the objections is just the same process as be being familiar with the, the presentation. You have to review them. Um, just review them over and over again. Be ready for them. I had the ones that I knew in my heart. I knew that the, the ones I was going to have going to get the most is I need to think about this uh, where I thought this was a free something free. So I highlighted those. I looked at them. I, I, I became comfortable with them. I, you know, um, where I where I don't always uh, where I'm, I stick firmly to the presentation, I've sort of adapted the overcoming objectives a little bit to my own style, to my what, what my comfort level. I mean, my content is 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 pretty much the same. It's just the way I word it is is a little bit different. Um, but again, understand in my mindset, it's a mindset thing. Understand that you're going to get the objections. I mean, it's going to happen. I mean, it may not seem, you know, I I think some sales are laydowns, but almost even the laydowns, there's there's overcoming. There's a, there's 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 some something I'm overcoming in every sale. Um, one um, one of the ones that the one of the big ones that um, that I had to that I had to be ready for was. I don't know you, you know, how do I know that this isn't a scam? I don't know you. So one of the things I did right off before I started was I made sure I had pictures of my insurance licenses and a picture of my, my driver's license ready to go. So when that objection comes, I'm ready to, to text that or email it to them right away. And then say, Hey, you know, I understand. Um, I, I know this is hard. I mean, you, you, you can't even see me on screen. I mean, we're just on the phone. You don't you don't know me for for anybody. So I'll tell you what. Let me send you my 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 the front of my driver's license. I'll send you uh, my insurance license for your state. That way, you know I'm with you. So I was ready. For, that was that was one that I thought more than anything I had to be ready for. It. So yeah. that's what I. Cool. Well, Carl, man, I, I, that's a lot of information. I really, really appreciate you coming on the call. Um, I'm looking at the group chat, and you've you've already addressed the the questions that that we have here. Well, the direct messages I've gotten. Uh, does anybody have anything that maybe they would like to to ask Carl? Uh, anything at all? I mean, I know we covered like pretty much. All that, a lot of the key stuff. <laughs> and I know, Carol, Carl, I know you got to be on, you've got an appointment coming up here in a few minutes, but does anybody have anything they'd like to ask? Feel free. All right. That's a good thing. Let me see. Uh, all right. Aust Austin is curious. Uh, so he wants to know, where'd it go? Oh, he wants to know, are you calling the non-appointment leads? Uh, do you have time to do that? Not anymore. I mean, I, I on a slow day like today, I, I'll, I'll do it. Um, but most days, I don't have time. Most With a $1,500 budget and, over, and 20 to 30 and sometimes upwards to 40 appointments on a given day, I don't have time to do the leads that don't um, uh, that don't make appointments. Now, what I do, uh, what I do do, is um, you'll get if, if you follow the, the automated system will automatically reach out with a with a couple messages to people that that fill out the lead the complete full lead. Now, sometimes they'll come back and say, "Well, I don't have time over the next couple of days." Do you you know um, on those ones? If there's there's certainly a little bit of interest there, I'll make sure that I text message them and try to get an appointment like two like a few further out or even the next week. Um, I definitely follow up on those ones, uh, whether it be by text message or a phone call, and just call in the back and say, "Hey, you know, I understand you don't have time um, the next couple of days, but what about you know what if it's, it's Monday or Tuesday? What about Thursday or Friday? What about early next week?" Um, so I do, I do make sure I follow up on, on the ones that are, are hesitant, but it seems like they want to want the appointment. They just, they just won't fit into their schedule over the next couple of days. But in the first couple of months I did, I did fall. I did um, 
when I didn't have as many appointments, when my budget wasn't as high as it is, I did call the the, lead, the leads that didn't set the appointments. Got so. it. Okay, excellent. Um, JJ asked a great question. She's curious about persistence. She's getting ready to start here in the next week or two. So have you figured out a way to keep track of persistence? Oh, goodness. Oh, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> I, um, well, it, I, I have, I do everything, every one of my sales, I put just for the sake of following up for birthdays and everything. I, I have, I set, I've set up an Excel spreadsheet where I put all of my sales down. Um, and I use that for follow-ups and everything. So I can, t you know, and I'll, I'll note when, um, you know, when a policy, um, when somebody, um, has an NSF charge on their first payment or they, or they have actually canceled the policy. Um, so I, yeah, I, I, I have my, I have a system using the Excel spreadsheet to be able to keep track of what's going on. Uh, um, I initially did that again, just for follow-up purposes uh, for, for you know the birthday cards the thank you cards those type of things but it also is helping me keep track of the persistency um and i'm you know and i the first couple months i didn't see much fall off the books uh but you know when you get into the third fourth month that's when you start seeing the reality and so i you know when i'm planning my budget when i'm thinking through everything i my my persistency right now is is just about 80 percent about 80 percent of the sales are staying on the books so, you know, you plan for that. I mean, so I, I know that I'm going to, you know, if I sell $10,000 a month, I know about 2000 of it's going to going to come back off. You know, it's, right. it's frustrating, but it's part of the game. It's, it's part of the process. It's part of the business. It's, so it's just something let me ask you this then, because I've always, most of the carriers don't count persistence until the client has made two actual payments or some carriers it's even three payments so are you are you doing your math on persistence after they've made two monthly payments oh no i actually made my pers my persistence goes on whether the, you know on from from the get-go whether they follow through on that first payment okay so, so yeah so that's, what i'm saying that's different i just i just want to put this out so that's what you just described then by stating that is a like a 90 plus persistence so just, right. just to be clear guys because if you if you do it the way i just described it you you know you can't really count your your annual persistence until they've made at least a payment or two right um i get what you're yeah. saying okay. excellent carl i know you got you've got appointments guys uh carl thank you so much i really appreciate you doing this for us um it, it really means a lot and i and i know that a lot of the agents got something out of this for sure right. i know i did I did. Absolutely. I'm motivated. Let's go do this. Guys, everybody have a killer week. Do your thing. If you need anything, just, just reach out. You know how to reach me. Happy hunting. <laughs>